Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to dive into the one-to-one -one relationship in EF Core. If you haven't watched the previous video on one-to-many relationships yet, don't worry. I'll put the link in the description so you can check it out before moving forward. Before we dive into the one-to-one -one relationship, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Entity Framework Extensions. With Entity Framework Extensions, you can insert data 14x faster, cutting down your saving time by an impressive 94%. If you want to optimize your EF Core performance and streamline your database operations, be sure to check out their powerful extensions. Let's start with the one-to-one -one relationship in EF Core. In this relationship, one entity is linked to exactly one other entity. For example, each customer can have one customer profile and vice versa. We'll walk through how to implement this in EF Core. Let's go ahead and add the customer profile entity to our project. The customer profile entity will hold additional information for each customer, such as their address, preferences, or any other data specific to the customer. It is directly related to the customer entity through the one-to-one -one relationship. Now, let's quickly add two properties to the customer profile entity, ID and address. The ID will be the primary key for the customer profile, and address will store the customer's address. Okay, we have added the two properties, ID and address. Let's see how we can define the parent and child types in a one-to-one -one relationship. Understanding this is key to setting up a clear relationship between entities in EF Core. But it's not always obvious which side should be the parent and which side should be the child. Here are a few things to keep in mind. First, if the tables for both entities already exist in the database, the table that contains the foreign key columns should be considered the dependent type. Next, a type is usually the dependent if it cannot logically exist without the other type. Think about it this way. It doesn't make sense to have a customer profile without a customer. So in this case, the customer profile is the dependent entity because the profile can't exist without a customer. Finally, if there's a parent-child relationship, the child is typically the dependent type. So in our example, customer is the parent entity and customer profile is the child. That makes customer profile the dependent entity. Now in our case, customer profile is the child entity. Let's define the foreign key and navigation property to establish the relationship between customer and customer profile. We are adding customer ID as the foreign key in the customer profile entity and customer as the navigation property. This allows customer profile to reference the customer it belongs to. Next, let's add the navigation property to the customer entity that we have already added to customer profile. Here. I mark customer profile as nullable because the customer entity can exist without a customer profile. Not every customer might have a profile, so it's important to allow for a null value in the database. Now that we have marked customer profile as nullable, let's configure the one-to-one -one relationship in YEF Core using the Fluent API. This will ensure that YEF Core knows how to handle this relationship in the database. And here, we use the has one method to specify that a customer has one customer profile. The has one method is used to define the navigation property on the principal entity. In this case, the customer entity. It establishes that customer is the principal in the relationship, and it points to customer profile, which is the dependent entity. Now we use dot with one c dot customer to define the reverse side of the relationship. Dot with one c dot customer tells EF Core that the customer profile entity should have exactly one customer. The C represents the customer profile entity and c.customer refers to the navigation property that links back to the customer entity. The dot has foreign key. Method is used to specify which property in the dependent entity will hold the foreign key that links it to the principal entity. In our example, customer profile.customer ID is the foreign key that connects the customer profile to the customer. The foreign key is essentially a reference to the customer entity's primary key, customer.id. By using that is required, we're ensuring that the customer profile cannot exist without being linked to a customer. This makes the relationship mandatory, meaning every customer profile must have an associated customer. Now, we need to add a DB set for the customer profile entity in our DB context. This DB set customer profile property will allow us to interact with the customer profile table in the database. When we run queries or perform operations like add, update, or delete, YEF Core will track the customer profile entities using this DB set. Now that we've set up the one-to-one -one relationship and the necessary entities, it's time to run the add migration command. This will generate a migration that updates our database schema 
to reflect the changes we made to the entities. I will give added customer profile table as the name for the migration. This name will help us easily identify that this migration is related to the addition of the customer table and any related changes. While generating the migration file, we got an error. Let's go and fix this error. This error occurs because YefCore is trying to set up a relationship between the customer and customer profile entities, but the foreign key, customer ID, is of type int, while the primary key ID of the customer entity is of type GUID. This mismatch in data types is causing the error. To fix this issue, let's go to the customer entity and check the ID properties data type. Here, the ID is of type GUID. Now, let's check the customer ID data type in the customer profile entity to ensure it matches the ID data type in the customer entity. Here, the customer ID is of type int, which is why we got the error. To fix this, let's change it to GUID to match the customer entity's ID. Now, let's run the add migration command again. First, I clear command window. Then, run the add migration command, and this time it will successfully build and generate the migration file. In here, you can see the migration file for customer profile. This migration includes the changes we made, such as the foreign key and the updated data type for customer ID. Let's run the update database command now to apply these changes to our database. This will update the schema based on the migration we just created. So, we ran the migration successfully, and now let's go to the database to see that the changes are available. Here, you can see that the customer profile table is available in our database. Let's open the table. As you can see, the customer profile table has three columns, ID as the primary key, address and customer ID as the foreign key linking back to the customer table. Let's enter a dummy record into the customer profile table for the existing customer, John Doe. Before we run the application, we need to make some modifications to our service to handle the newly added customer profile data. Let's go ahead and make those changes. In the get all async method, we need to include the related customer profile data by using dat include customer profile. This ensures that when we retrieve all customers, we also retrieve their associated customer profile information. Now, we need to do another change in the customer profile entity. We need to add the JSON ignore annotation for customer property because it would otherwise create a circular reference during serialization. When YEF core loads the customer profile entity, includes the customer entity, and vice versa, causing an infinite loop while serializing. Okay, we've done the required modifications. Now, let's run the application and see the results. In Postman, I will send a request to our get all customer endpoint. Here, we got the response including customer profile data along with the customer details. We can see the ID, address, and customer ID fields in the customer profile data, which confirms that the customer profile is properly linked to the customer entity. All right, now let's wrap up this video. We've successfully set up the one-to-one -one relationship between customer and customer profile in EF Core. In the next video, we'll dive into many-to-many -many relationships, so stay tuned for that. And don't forget to subscribe for more EF Core tutorials and future videos. Thanks for watching. Happy coding!